Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. The solo variant for Tavern Masters is okay. It's the same game as a cooperative game. You just play it by yourself. So the main cusp of the game is you're going to set a number of rounds, which is your difficulty. How quickly am I going to try to accomplish this to get 20 gold coins? And if you say three rounds or four rounds or five rounds, if you get those 20 coins at the end of your turn, you win the game. So that's everything else works exactly the same as the base game. Just kind of playing by yourself. You don't have that trading mechanism going on. So the cooperative game is going to be just kind of like that for the most part. And so what I kind of do when I play it is I try to get 20 coins as fast as I can. So I try to beat my record of three, four, five, six, seven rounds, whatever it may be. I just try to beat that. So if I can do it in four, I'll just try to beat that. I'll tr let's do it in three rounds. But it can get very, very difficult to do that, especially at the higher levels, because it's just really a lot of luck coming out. Probably not the best solo game in the world. I feel like maybe it was tacked on a little bit because uh, it's a Kickstarter. We just want to add something to it. I don't know if this is a game that I would seek out to play solo. If you really like luck kind of games and you want to play this by yourself, sure. I don't know if it's like munching in by yourself, that kind of luck involved, or like a flux type game uh, with luck involved. That's what you're going to get here. I don't know if that's really great to play solo, but if you want something mind, mind numbing that doesn't take a lot of thought, this might be it. Yeah, I think as a solo game player, I'd probably say stay away. If you have this game because you enjoy playing multiplayer and you want to play it solo, yep, you hit the sweet spot of this game. I just don't think I would seek it out like, man, I really want this. There's a lot better solo experiences out there. It's nice that it's there. If you're going to have the game anyway, and you're going to play it, it's nice to have that game you can play solo and multi. That's really great, especially if you're a solo game player, because you kind of go both ways, which is really nice. But I don't know if I'd seek this one out. So for me, it was a purge. I'm not going to be keeping the base game. I'm not going to be keeping it as a solo game. It'll be going out the door, and I hope this helps you out when you're deciding what games you want to play solo. Here's Tavern Masters. You can see this is going to happen inside of a pub. And you're going to have orcs and wizards and whatnot involved. It's actually kind of a small box. a little bit deep, but it, it is a rather small box and, co and compact. You're going to have a rule book that will come with it. You are going to have a bunch of these little coins. They're cardboard, very thick, very nice. And there was an upgrade for metal. We are going to have a couple expansions I was able to fit inside of here pretty, pretty easily. So there's a lot of room in this box. This is what you get with the base game. That was the expansions that I put in there. You're going to get a few of these tokens for the rounds. They're very, very thick. Very, very nice. You are going to have your cheat sheets for the rounds. Very thick cardboard. You're going to have the icons on the back. So a great little cheat sheet. And this is what you'll be playing with most of the time is your decks of cards. Here's the patron decks. You can see they look like a wooden door. And then you'll have some artwork on it. The artwork is fairly good. I like it. It's okay. Uh, I can see why some people might not like it. Uh, but it's okay to me. And you can see what you want and what you have. Very good. And then you'll have your tavern deck, which will make up the other half of the cards. So you're going to have two card decks that you'll be using. Same style, but this would be more like items and things that you're doing. You have little icons that you'll have at the bottom. And that's all the components. So really this game is, the majority of this is going to be the two decks of cards and the coins. That's really what you're going to be paying for. And the custom insert here is pretty nice. So we'll take a look at how the game works. Here's a rule booklet. It tells you around the front, it's one to six tavern keepers. That's players, of course. The rule book isn't that well organized. So you're going to have a bunch of words here. There's a few ways to play, competitive, cooperative, and solo that you're going to have in here. It's going to tell you how to begin the game. The insertions here for the competitive or cooperative, kind of thrown here with the solo. Going to have a component overview with pictures, which is great. Not a whole lot in here with a how to play. Once again, you're going to have another uh, overview here that you'll have. Explain how the day phase works. And then I'm going to tell you what the cavern cards kind of look like and what everything means. You're going to have your non-playing characters, your icons, the trading, and kind of how that works. And then game terms will be described. And then they're going to explain to you the way the second phase works, and how the patron cards work. So these patron cards come out in the second phase. You're going to have the counting the fill, which is like the third phase of the game. Your hand size limits and how to win. Big font, white, which is good. I like that. Uh, they're going to have an advertisement for the expansions and a game they're going to be coming out with or have already come out with, and then a cheat sheet on the back. It's okay. I'm not crazy about the rule book. I'm not really crazy about the organization, how to find things. There's not an index in the front. I found some things confusing and missing, but uh, middle of the road at best. 
Should the setup of the game will look like the first player will take round one in the server. Each player will get three coins. You'll shuffle both decks, and then you'll take four cards from the tavern deck per player, and each player will take these. And then what they will do is they will draft these cards. They will decide what they want. First time you play, you might not want to draft because everybody doesn't know what they're doing, but you know, you'll keep one and you'll pass one on. Then the next player to your will give you their card. You'll take a second one, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, until you're starting the game with a hand of four cards. So you'll draft those and then you'll be ready to go. There are three phases to the game. There's a day phase, night phase, and count the till. And once you're ready to go, you'll continue all through all three of those phases. When that's done, you'll pass the server. So the next player can be the first player. And you'll use these to track, and it'll be round two. And then you'll see round three and round four, depending on how many players, how many rounds that you're going to play in the game. I'm going to set the patron deck aside because it's not used in the day phase. In the beginning of that, each player will then draw three cards from the tavern deck. So these will just be randomly aside, added to your four, and you'll have seven cards. And now what you'll do at this point is you'll see down here as a purchase price. So if I wanted to play this card and have it down in front of me for game purposes, I would then spend my coins. And everybody kind of does this simultaneously. You'll just be playing cards out based on what, for reasons in the game, which I'll get to, and you just be paying the prices. So if I want to put mutton down, then I would have to pay two coins. And because I only started out with three when the game started, I would be out. But you can purchase anything based on the price. And some of these will give you powers. Gain one coin each round if you have a uh, knuckle fighter in your tavern, etc. So there's different things that you can do. Hire one cost, or if you have any mead, I've got mutton and crusty bread, but if I had mead, then that guy would be free just for having it. I don't have to spend it. Uh, you can see they all have some different costs on them. So that's what you're going to do in the day phase. During the day phase, you can also trade cards if you want to. So I could trade cards that I've played or that are in my hand and kind of travel these up. The only thing you can utilize at this time is you can only trade coins and you can only trade cards. That's all the trading that you can do. But we kind of found that we didn't trade as much. Maybe just our group think, but you definitely need to do that if you want this to work out for you. In the night phase, you won't be using the tavern deck anymore. You'll be using the patron deck. Each player will be randomly given three patrons that they'll be utilizing this turn. Then players will play these patron cards depending on what they want. In this case, this guy wants an entertainer, any of them. I don't have an entertainer. I only have mutton and crusty bread. Wah, wah, bad luck for me. This guy wants drink. I've got mutton and crusty bread, so I can't play him. Luckily, this guy wants any drink. He's a patron. You may play one bread for free from your hand this round. So that's what he's going to allow me to do. So I will definitely play him down. I'll just place him here by the bread so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Now, if you get lucky and you can play more of these patron cards, fantastic. You just lucked out. You did a really good job. In my case, I can only play 33% or one out of the three cards that I was randomly assigned. But I was at least, and thank goodness, I was able to play the Village Baker, which is at least one. Now you're going to get gold. And you're going to get one gold for each patron you have. Now, there's going to be some noble patrons that will be in here. And you can only play them if you have cards that allow it, but they're worth two. So I'm going to get one coin for playing that patron. Now, in a competitive game, if you have 20 coins at any point in the game at this point, you would win the game. If you're playing cooperative, then you wait to the last round. That would be cooperative or solo, and the game ends and the outcome is determined. Now, at this point, you would discard any patrons unless they like something in your tavern. So right now, this guy likes the bread, so he'll stick around. But let's say somebody played a card or somehow this I traded it away or something and this bread is no longer there in round two, then I would get paid for that guy, and then this guy would go away because I'm no longer serving what he wants. But as long as I'm serving what he wants, he will stay in my tavern. Now, at this point, I have to discard down to five. Now, I have tavern and patron cards in my hand. I have a whole bunch. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards, which means I would have to discard two cards. Any combination. It could be all tavern, all patrons, one of each. Whatever doesn't work into my strategy. So at the end of my turn, I only have five cards in my hand. The round marker passes, and you continue to do the same thing over and over until either somebody has 20 coins or you play the number of rounds and you see who wins. As for the solo game, the solo game is going to work just like the competitive game, except for you're going to be playing by yourself. If however many rounds that you decide to play based on the difficulty that you want, if you don't have 20 coins at the end of those rounds, then you would lose the game. 
And if you do have 20 coins, then you'll be able to win the game. So that's the thing. You just want to, however many rounds you're going to play based on the difficulty, you want to make sure you have 20 coins when you get to that point, and that will be your win or your loss. Who should buy this game? This is for people who like light card games. Maybe you want to talk while you're playing. You don't mind a little bit of luck in your game. Uh, for those that don't mind going out and getting expansions, even cheaper ones, then this could be one because I think the expansions are required for this game. Other than that, I think most people are probably going to pass or this is a try before you buy. But it is a solid game, and I did like it, but I got so many games, I can't keep them all, guys. So this one's going to be a purge for me. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel lets us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing.